Hey, hey, party people, it's Lycona de Chichi, and welcome to the Easy Peasy Guide for the Voidcast Dias Extreme. Before we start, our markers are set up like this. You'll need clock positions, healer groups or light party groups, and vertical pairs. For the healer groups, you'll want to stay on your relative side of the stage. It'll help with a few mechanics later in this fight. Pull the boss into the middle, and he'll first cast Terra Storm. Two giant balls will appear, underneath them AoEs will hit, so just go to the safe side. As the balls are growing, he'll also cast Lingering Spark. These are basically twisters, so at the end of the cast bar, move away from where you were just standing. Next is Phases of the Blade, where he'll do a 180 degree front cleave, and then immediately do a 180 degree back cleave. So always get behind him, and once you see that giant red moon cleave, just run through him to the other side. Binding Cold comes out next, which is an AoE with a dot tick, so heal up accordingly and use your mitigations. Next, the boss will cast Gale Sphere. He'll spawn four ghosts that will begin to float towards the outside of the stage in a particular order. The first two ghosts will always spawn at either the north or the south, while the last two are always spawning at the east or the west. They'll then drop the green balls, and you've seen this in normal mode, they'll shoot a line AoE through the middle of the stage. The order in which the ghost spawns determines the order in which the green balls will cast their line AoEs. So for example, the first ghost spawns, their ball line AoEs come through the middle, the second ghost that spawn will have their balls line AoE through the middle, then number three, and then number four. This is where our markers come in handy because we call out the numbers according to which ghost spawns next. In our case here, it's one three, then two four. So you'll want to dodge ghost one first, its line AoEs. Ice spikes will appear in the middle of the stage, so you'll need to dodge them and the second ball line AoEs. Then dodge the other two ghosts and their balls, and you're good to go. Just remember, don't take AoE balls to the face. Another thing you can do during this mechanic is practice your north and south healer groups, as well as your vertical pairs when you're doing these dodges. It'll help you out when you see this mechanic again later with some extra spice. Phases of the Blade comes out next, so get behind him, and when you see the cleave, run through. Binding Cold comes out again, which is the AoE with the Ice Bleed. AoE Tank Busters come out on each tank and will hit multiple times. Ashdaya's Shadow comes out next, which is where Gobez just buffs himself and powers up for the next phase of the fight. Black Fang then comes out, so you'll need to throw up some mitigation for the big AoE hit here. Then will the real Ashdaya's Shadow please stand up, because the boss will either charge up with a chariot or a dynamo. In this case, the animation is a dynamo with the big purple stuff going everywhere. So remember this for later. Then a new tank buster will come out where he'll slash three times. The off tank should provoke on the second hit, or you can tank swap for each hit. It's really up to you. Phases of the Shadow comes out next, so get behind him and when he cleaves you gotta run through, but this time you also gotta remember if it was a chariot or a dynamo. In our case, it was the dynamo. Every party member will get an AoE underneath them, and you just wanna wait here for a second. Let the dynamo go off and then run to your clock positions to spread out. We found that true north spots in this fight was a lot easier than boss relative for clock positions. Next will be Double Meteor. For this mechanic, we have the DPS going north and the tanks and healers going south. One tower will spawn in a corner on the north side that has three pylons in it, and one tower will spawn on the corner on the south side with two pylons in it. One healer will get the knockback animation underneath them, and they are the ones that are going to stand in the middle. They're the ones that are also picking up the tether and pointing the AoE that's coming from Ashdaya to the south so nobody else gets hit. One DPS will get a flare, and one tank or healer will get a flare. Flare peoples will want to get knocked back to the empty corners, while the other three DPS will want to get knocked back into the three pylon tower, while the other two support members will get back knocked into the two pylon tower. After all that, come back to the middle and he'll start casting Asjaya's Shadow. Just like last time, he'll put a dynamo or a chariot on himself, and you'll have to look at the animation and remember it for later. The dynamo or chariot will always be opposite from the first time you've seen this mechanic. In our run here, it was a dynamo before, and now it's going to be a chariot, with all the purple stuff contained within the boss's hitbox. The triple tank busters will come out just like last time, so for the off tank, you can provoke at the second hit. Then he'll start casting Void Stardust. You'll want to be in your healer groups and go to your respective side of the stage. There are two similar patterns, and here's how we handle it. Focus on the AoE in your corner. Watch for the little AoEs that spit out and then go opposite of that. 
Once the main AoE disappears, walk into it and wait here for just a moment while the tracking AoEs go off, go off around the stage. Then you'll get enumeration pairs, melee step in towards the boss while the range and healers hang out at the back. We'll see this mechanic again later as well as the other pattern, but the movement and dodge is basically the same. Right after that, you'll either get a healer group mechanic or a role position mechanic. In our run here, Eventide Fall is being cast, which is the healer group or light party stacks. We just use the 2 and 4 marker or east and west. We'll see roll groups later, but just note it's exactly the same as the mechanic in the Seat of Sacrifice extreme. DPS south, healers at either 2 or 4, and tanks are at the north. Another Binding Cold comes out, followed by a Void Meteor, which is the AoE tank busters. Then he'll cast Phases of the Shadow, so get behind him to dodge the front cleave, then run through to dodge the back cleave. And previously he was charged up with Chariot in our run, so we dodge away from the boss and into your healer groups with the shared AoEs. He'll then cast Terror Storm and then Arctic Assault, in which the stage will only have one safe quadrant. You'll want to be in your healer groups to take the shared AoE. One group will be near the boss at the front and the other will be at the back. Next, he'll cast another Binding Cold, which is the AoE with the Ice Bleed debuff. Then he'll jump back to the center for Spicy Gale Sphere. The ghosts will come out, so call out the numbers in the order that they appear, same as before, but this time you're going to get either Enumeration or Healer Group stacks during these dodges. So call out which ghosts are first. In our case, it's 3 and 1, followed by 2 and 4. Get into your vertical pairs and prep to dodge the first line AoEs and handle enumeration or healer stacks. Dodge the second AoEs and watch for the ice in the middle, then dodge the third and fourth line AoEs and handle the last mechanic. Sometimes a lot of groups get spun around here, but try to stay on your side of the stage and it'll all work itself out. As soon as those mechanics are done, immediately get behind him and then dodge those cleaves. And at this point, you've seen all the mechanics in the fight, but there are a few more with different combinations. Another Binding Cold comes out. Ashdaya's Shadow is next, so it could be either a Dynamo or Chariot. In our case, it was a Chariot. Void Stardust comes out again, so look at your group's AoE. For this pattern, you can go into the corner, see where the little AoE spit out, go to the opposite side. Once they're all gone, run in, and then wait a moment for the little AoEs to explode, handle the enumerations. But for this one, you have to wait for a Lingering Spark to finish its cast and then move out of the way. Next, you'll get either healer stacks or roll positions, and in our case, it's Eventide Triad, which is the roll positions. So DPS south, healers on east or west, and tanks at the north. Phases of the Shadow comes out next, so get behind him and dodge the two cleaves, and then run out and get into your healer stacks. And we know this because he buffed himself up with Chariot earlier. Double Meteor comes out again, which is the knockback, and the healer gets the knockback thing, and there's a tether, but this one has a little bit more pressure on you because if you wipe here, then you're gonna have to redo the entire fight. So make sure you get it right, make sure you look at where the flares go and all that jazz. And from here on out, it's just a simple rotation of the mechanics again, but if your DPS is on point and you can handle all these mechanics, congratulations on your clear. I really enjoyed this fight. I think it was quite active and finally, I did not have to look at my debuff bar to solve mechanics. Um, and from a fresh prog, on this, it took uh, it took our group about two hours to learn and clear, but with this guide, you'll get it done way quicker, probably like an hour, or at least like one lockout. Not too bad. So I can't wait to see all of you guys get your weapons and get into Savage that's going to be released next week. Or if you're watching this in the future, it's patch 6.4 for Final Fantasy XIV, and the next Savage tier, we're about to cap off the expansion. So until next time, I'll see you in Savage, and keep on adventuring.